Okay, we uh, had a short that I did here a little while back where I had a point part in the lathe and I had been turning here. When I was turning here for maximum support, I had the jaws almost out to the edge. There was just a little bit left. I'd left about 50 thousandths of an inch there. Now, what I suggested as a, why did I do this, I bored through the middle and coming on through the middle, I bored all the way to this end. What the part needed for a feature is it had to have an alignment counter bore on this end later on. Now, the reason I bored all the way through was so that the counter bore here would have something for me to dial in on. And I can reach just with an indicator on an angle even right here on the end and dial that in and be pretty true as far as where this counter bore is. Because this would have been dead in line with this, the face, the turn, everything that I had done before since it was bored at the same time. Now, if when I dialed this in, this part was a little bit crooked, because when I turn it around, there's no guarantee, even though your, your jaws are pretty nice, there's no guarantee. Now, I could have also worried about dialing it in here on the face that I had, so that it would make it even more so, but let's say that it was 10 thousandths inch crooked. If it was 10 thousandths of an inch crooked, which is extreme, by dialing in here, I'm still correct for this counter bar. It doesn't really matter. It still lines it up and down in the same place. This little bit of sideways wobble wouldn't have moved that much. However, the suggestion was made by someone that what I could have done been easier in their mind was I could have just turned a little bit here for an alignment when I turned it around instead of uh, boring through. Now, why this would have been easier, it took me a little second to figure out why it would have been easier, and that was because I wouldn't have had to change tools. I could have just used the same turning tool I was using here to turn a little bit here. Now, they couldn't see in uh, the video, they couldn't really see that this was only 50 thousandths of an inch. So it would have really been hard to turn anything 50 thousandths of an inch here. However, it brings up the same idea, and they had suggested turning a hundred to a two hundred thousandths wide band on the part. And if I had planned from the start for that, I could have. So I'd left it further out of the jaws. Instead of trying to get maximum grab for heavy cuts, let's say I left it out a little further. And let's say that I turned two hundred thousandths here. So now I've got a band here that I could dial on. I turn it around, and I dial in on that band, but again, it's crooked. Now when I dial in on this band and I move out this far, my 10 thousandths run out here means that this hole up and down is now off by 10 thousandths of an inch. And another suggestion was made on that also, that by dialing at a larger diameter, I would have more accuracy. Well, if I dial at a bigger diameter, as far as for the, uh, <clears throat> the radial movement, it doesn't really make any difference how big the diameter is. It's the same. The, the difference from the front to the back for accuracy, if this is 20 foot in diameter, or if it's one inch, is all the same. If I'm off a thousandths, I'm off a thousandths. Now, if I am, as far as sideways for face, if I am further out, that makes a big difference and I can get more accurate. If I had something faced and I was on a two foot diameter and I was off by a thousandth, well, by the time you get down here to, the, to this, you wouldn't even see a tenth of an inch difference. So it does magnify in that direction, but direct in and out of the, uh, the dialing, it, it doesn't change, but it, it really, and that was the main reason why I was doing it that way, not so much that I needed something to dial in on. I could have done it differently. I could have, when I turned it around, left the part further out, uh, dialed in on this part here, checked to make sure this is square. It just would have been more, more fuss. As it was, this shoulder here, I just slapped it against the chuck jaws, and I hammered it back there. I knew that by hammering against the chuck jaws, it'd be within a couple thousandths of straight this way, which would be good enough. And I would be in the plane that I bored it, which matched the first figure, first features. Now, while 
This is all talking about turning things around and how it relates to manual machines. You have the th same thing on a CNC if you have a subspindle and you're changing from a main spindle to a subspindle. When you change over to your subspindle, do you grab it on the part that you care about, that you are trying to be correct in an accuracy, or do you uh, move your jaws and make them so that they grab on another part? Not, not that I can give you an exact concept here, but just to keep it in your mind that where you grab it makes a difference, how you grab it, where you dial it. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to be more clear that we wanted to dial in on the same diameter that the feature was going to be. So when it was all, well, which was this end, yeah. So we would have worked on it initially. We turned this, faced it, had this faced. So all of these were dead on what we wanted as a feature. And then by boring through, we had a piece back here that was also dead on to these. Although it may not be dead on to some other parts of the part, it didn't matter. And that's what that was all about. Um, I didn't think there was any confusion, but maybe it's a little more clear now. And again, to keep in mind, if we have this part here to dial in and we dial in on it, then we're accurate at that same plane. If we dial in out here, now we have to be sure that we're accurate in the other plane, in the other direction, or it's going to throw it off. It's going to be, if this is tipped and it's running true here, you'll see a little bit of elliptical because you're not running on a true diameter all the way around. But that elliptical run out, you get it zero, zero, you get it zero, zero at 90 degrees, and then uh, this here is still going to be off 10 thousandths or more in position because you weren't straight. Where if you were, again, if you weren't straight and you were right here, it wouldn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's a separate thing. 